Harriet Hoff. I'm professor of anesthesiology and biomedical engineering at the University of Utah. My research focuses on actions anesthesiologists can take to reduce healthcare associated infections. This work has suddenly become trendy during the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm here today to talk about infection control in the context of dual infection risks to patients as well as to healthcare professionals. Our fourth question is to discuss how filters work and how to select the right device and placement. Now everyone knows they want to use filters, but what's the right way to do it? Well, let's first talk about types. Filters are devices that contain a material, which pros in the business calls medium, but I'm not going to. Filters are devices that contain a material that filters bacteria and viruses. They can be made from electrostatic or mechanical pleated material. Both types are effective. There's been a lot of conversation about which one is better. They both work fine, so you don't really need to worry about it too much, except to know that there are two kinds of devices. One device that is commonly confused with a filter, because it looks a little bit like one, is the heat and moisture exchanger, or HME, which is a device that helps retain moisture and heat in the patient's airway and prevent moisture from entering the circuit and the machine. Those HME devices do not provide any level of filtration. Their purpose is to capture water droplets and not bacteria and viruses. It is, however, common to combine HME devices with a filter. It's important that you know if the HME device you're using has a filter in it, since HME devices don't provide protection against viruses and bacteria, and so if you're using one that doesn't have a filter, you're gonna to need to have a filter somewhere else. Now, note that HME devices, whether they're combined with a filter or not, have to be placed close to the patient's airway to be effective because if they're not close to the patient's airway, they can't maintain moisture in the patient's airway. Filters, on the other hand, are effective at the patient end or the machine end. So if you're using a combination device, it has to be at the patient end. There are two key performance measures that filters must meet to be effective. The first is bacterial filtration efficiency, or BFE, and the second is viral filtration efficiency, or VFE. The efficiency of a filter is measured in terms of percentage of pathogens that are blocked or captured by the filter material. A VFE of 99.99% .99 means only one particle, that is a virus or bacteria, in 10,000 will pass through the filter under standard testing conditions. Since the COVID-19 pathogen is a virus, the focus of the filtration conversations recently has been on viral filtration efficiency. Current recommendations are to use a filter with a VFE of 99.99%. If you're interested in reading about the conversations that led to this recommendation, the Anesthesia Patient Safety Foundation and American Society of Anesthesiologists have some good web pages on recommendation for filtration devices. Adding more filters in series increases the efficiency slightly. However, it also increases the resistance in the circuit so that it may become difficult to ventilate the patient if you use too many filters. And it also, of course, increases cost and waste. If you do decide to use additional filters as a safety measure, it's important to pay attention to the resistance in the ventilation circuit to make sure that your patient is adequately being ventilated despite that increased resistance. This is particularly important in pediatric and small patients. Another performance measure that is often confused with VFE and BFE is high efficiency particulate airway or HEPA. HEPA filters were designed by NASA to keep the air clean and dust free in ventilation systems in spacecraft. The standard for a HEPA filter as compared to VFE and BFE, is to block or capture a 0.3 micron particle at 99.97% efficiency. HEPA performance testing is therefore not required for airway filters since the efficiency is less than VFE and BFE rating. A lot of the conversation about filters has related to use of 
HEPA filters, but in reality, it would be more accurate to talk about VFE and BFE rating because that's what really matters pre for preventing cross-contamination. So uh, even though you're going to hear a lot about HEPA filters, what you really want to focus on is the viral filtration efficiency rather than the particle filtration efficiency. Now, portable room ventilation systems that contain HEPA filters are often deployed in the operating room during airway management to reduce viral aerosol load because operating rooms are generally a positive pressure environment. So that is a HEPA filter. That's a machine you've probably seen but that's used to clean the environment of the operating room rather than to protect the machine. So now we have a lot of understanding of filters and the key take home is you want a VFE and BFE of 99.99% to very much protect your machine from the patient and your patient from the machine. Thanks for watching. This is one of a series of videos on tools for protecting the anesthesia professional and the patient during a pandemic. I hope you find this information useful.